During the 1920s and 30s, a lot of important discoveries that were made that set the stage for the synthetic polymer industry to become uh, what it is today, uh, to really take off. And one of the most important ones was this idea that polymers actually are long chain molecules. Before the 1920s, that actually wasn't the view of these materials. People knew that they were big molecules or macromolecules, but the conventional view was that they were aggregates or blobs of these molecules because it wasn't thought that there could be a mechanism for them to form long chains. Uh, the idea was that it would be more likely that they would cluster together and form these aggregates. So Hermann Staudinger was a, a chemist that uh, deduced this long chain structure. This was actually a very radical and controversial theory that was not initially widely accepted. Uh, but later, uh, with subsequent work, it became clear that polymers actually were long chains. Uh, and Staudinger used these principles to deduce the structure of polyethylene, which we'll see soon as one of the most important synthetic polymers uh, that's, uh, uh, that can be produced. Uh, and this was kind of the origin of polymer chemistry as we know it today, because it required this insight into actually what is the structure of the polymer molecule. This was such an important advancement uh, and discovery that Staudinger was awarded the Nobel Prize uh, in 1953. Now, these uh, things were happening in Europe, uh, but here in the U.S., uh, there was also some important discoveries uh, in terms of synthetic polymers. Uh, and a lot of these took place at uh, the laboratories of the DuPont Corporation. Uh, and like I said to you before, if you think that, uh, you know, polymers were the smartphones of the 20th century, uh, DuPont was the Apple or Google of the 20th century because this was one uh, company where so many of these important discoveries emerged. Uh, and one of the main players uh, in that was a chemist named Wallace Carruthers. Uh, so he was responsible for many things, but some of his key discoveries were the, um, uh, the discovery of nylon, which is a trade name for a polyamide uh, material. We'll talk about that more later. Uh, but again, this was driven by the desire to produce synthetic or man-made materials that mimicked natural materials that were already available and well-known, but were in limited supply. In this case, the material was silk. Uh, so there was uh, interest in producing a synthetic silk uh, substitute uh, because, again, you know, it's a limited resource. Uh, silkworms uh, can only produce uh, so much uh, material. Uh, and as people become more... Uh, the market for these kind of materials grows, then there's a driver to um, be able to supply uh, the raw materials needed to produce those goods. So uh, Wallace Carruthers uh, made a lot of uh, innovations that uh, enabled these kinds of materials to be produced. So nylon was a hugely successful product uh, and really that opened the door for uh, commercial success of these materials because people started to notice, hey, you know, this is a, a new thing that we can, we can do a lot with uh, and make a lot of money. He also had a role in uh, producing a neoprene, uh, which was the first synthetic rubber. So again, now this is not being produced at all using the natural rubber or the tree sap. This is produced uh, by synthetic chemistry. Uh, and to do these things, uh, Carruthers developed uh, and studied the uh, polymerization reactions that were needed uh, to produce these materials. So uh, a lot of these innovations uh, are still uh, in, in use today. Also uh, in the 1930s, important discoveries were made in the mechanical properties and the thermodynamic properties associated with how uh, polymers behave. And one of the main players in that area uh, was a person named Paul Flory. Uh, so Flory had two really uh, uh, incredibly important contributions. One is this idea of rubber elasticity theory. So when we talked about uh, synthetic, uh, when we talked about uh, uh, rubber, uh, vulcanized rubber, uh, we said that it was cross-linked and that these chemical attachment points between neighboring polymer chains uh, produce kind of a mesh structure that has more of a rigid character than just the gooey uh, or mushy uh, natural rubber that comes directly from the tree sap. Uh, and so it makes sense that the uh, mechanical properties of this material would be related to the number of these cross-links uh, in the material. And so Flory uh, came up with a relationship uh, to, to, to express just that. It relates the cross-link density to the mechanical strength of the material. We'll talk about this a little bit uh, later in the course. Uh, another important contribution was solution theory. So this deals with telling uh, how well or 
uh, how poorly polymers mix in solvents, uh, either with uh, other polymers of the same type or with different polymers. Uh, and these are very important insights to uh, producing polymer blends uh, and to manufacturing products with polymers because you need to dissolve them sometimes in a solvent uh, in order to, uh, to produce uh, products. Uh, and, and so this came up with the idea of um, taking phenomena at the molecular scale, the thermodynamic and uh, uh, chemical properties, and showing how those uh, contribute directly to define uh, the bulk or the macro scale properties which we which we see and so these are important insights if you want to design uh, material or the process to make the material so that it has desired properties for a particular application and for these discoveries uh, paul flory was awarded the nobel prize uh, in 1974. so in the 30s and 40s then uh, this industry really began to take off uh, commercialization of nylon was really a driver for this uh, there was discoveries kept coming uh, of many different materials, uh, Teflon, silicone rubber, epoxies. And then uh, World War II was also a major driver for the development of this industry, not necessarily for uh, the discoveries uh, in terms of the chemistry, but the technology for how to produce large quantities of these materials. So up until this time, uh, the area of synthetic polymers had been something that uh, was more focused in the chemistry lab and discovering these new materials. But when the need cam comes to mass produce these, this is where engineers, or particularly chemical engineers, get involved. Uh, and so the field then evolves not only from discovering uh, different kinds of materials, uh, but ways to manufacture them uh, in a manner that's uh, cost effective.